Welcome to the Law of the Future podcast with Dennis Hilleman. This podcast is all about technology, politics, and law. Dennis Hilleman is a partner in an international law firm. He wants to change our mind on regulating new technologies. All opinions expressed in the podcast are the personal opinions of Dennis or his guests. And here is Dennis. Hey, do you want to be part of a network of lawyers and IT experts discussing blockchain? Do you want to learn about blockchain and law? Then join the Blockchain Lawyers Network for free. Go to www.blockchainlawyersnetwork.com and be part of a great community. Hi everyone and welcome to the Law of the Future podcast. It's Tuesday, the uh, 8th of February 2022. My name is Dennis Hillemann. I'm a lawyer partner at Field Fisher, Germany. And I'm looking forward to speak on news concerning blockchain and cryptocurrency. I've checked up some news from the last week, brought it with me, and we'll discuss it. And yeah, we'll see what happened in the blockchain and crypto world. So blockchain is one of the mega trends of the future, if you like it or not. And I personally think that blockchain totally is. I'm really not sure if crypto is, but hey, we'll see about that. Now, last week, there has been a lot of talks about China because China is really boosting the blockchain economy at home because it actually thinks that blockchain will change the world. And as you know, China is very much focused on being an industry leader in emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, ship production, and of course, blockchain technology. China aims at being ahead of the world in this field as well. And China has authorized certain cities and businesses to conduct blockchain application trials. The pilot projects are being carried out in the Chinese capital Beijing, the country's biggest city Shanghai, and the sprawling southern city of Guangzhou. Chinese Authorities have selected 164 organizations from throughout the country to test blockchain technologies. These organizations include local government offices, colleges, banks, hospital, auto businesses, and power companies. China has long considered Bitcoin and other digital currencies as danger to the stability of the Chinese economy. So now China wants to see for itself which blockchain application could work in its favor and in a way, of course, that China can absolutely control the blockchain. You know, I personally think that China is especially looking into blockchain because of the immutable character of a blockchain storage and meaning that through blockchain, China can, of course, not only be part of an emerging technology, but also very much control its own citizens. Especially if you look at central banks' digital currencies, I mean, China has a huge potential there to track whatever its citizens are doing with their money through central banks' digital currency that is stored on a distributed ledger. I mean, if every transaction is stored and saved and trackable, it means that nothing is kept in secret anymore. And of course, that's a huge opportunity for the Chinese government to have control over what's going on in the country. You can see that, of course, in a very negative way. But on the other hand, it also has some advantages, of course, meaning especially that money laundering and terrorism finance will be very, very difficult in China. Not saying that that is a good thing, just saying that this, of course, the official reasons why the Chinese government will use this this security element of blockchain as well. In this matter, the Cyberspace Administration of China, the CAC, announced the um, commencement of an in-house effort to expedite blockchain development and innovation in the different zones and cities of the country. And overall, this initiative aims for the large-scale implementation of blockchain technology across businesses and government organizations in China. 
The key areas of blockchain development in China include manufacturing, energy, government, data sharing and services, law enforcement, taxation, criminal trials, inspection, copyright, civil affairs, education, healthcare, trade finance, risk control management and cross-border finance. So you see there's a lot of things going on when it comes to China and blockchain and cryptocurrency. So we better keep an eye on that and also, of course, we in Western countries must ask ourselves if it's good to be behind on that just once again, because basically Germany also, for example, released a blockchain strategy in 2019. And while this, of course, raised some hope that Germany will absolutely push into this technology as well, put a lot of money into it and boost the technology I think a lot of that got lost during the COVID-19 pandemic. And so I'm worried now that China, while China is pushing very much for all of this concerning blockchain and cryptocurrencies, the Western countries could fall behind. So this leads us to the US. What has been going on with the US and blockchain? Basically, whenever we're talking about the US and blockchain and cryptocurrency, we're taking a look at the SEC. The SEC released a rulemaking proposal to enhance investor protection and cybersecurity for alternative trading systems, the trade tre uh, treasuries and other governmental securities. Most relevant for the blockchain industry is that the EEC proposal seeks to regulate communication protocol systems. This could include wallets, block explorers that allow users to call smart contracts and other market participants, if not virtually every blockchain-based application. Despite Commissioner um, Pierce's uh, dissent, blockchain industry participants, trading platforms or otherwise will have only 30 days from January 26, 2000 to command on the proposed rules. And these rules absolutely created some turmoil last week and still ongoing this week. There has been discussion that the SEC watchdogs are pointing to ambush crypto markets with a Trojan horse regulation, meaning it's not a regulation that officially aims at blockchain and cryptocurrencies, but very much applies to it. And so there's hope that the pro-crypto commissioner Esther Pierce, however, um, will make this not happen and there will be better regulation coming from the SEC later this year. Because Pierce expects an SEC proposal to expand the definition of an exchange as a backdoor way to regulate cryptocurrency exchange, the Republican appointee behaves, uh, believes the commissioner is moving too quickly with a comment period of 30 days. And so there has been a lot of critics coming from the Republican Party in the U.S., but mainly we're still missing any formal direct proposals for regulating crypto exchanges or crypto in general on the SEC's agenda this year on a federal level. As you all probably know, there's regulation for crypto on the state's level, but we're still missing that in the US on the federal level, which probably will come at some point sooner or later. And if it comes, it will have, of course, a direct effect on the markets in the, in the crypto universe. I mean, we don't need to discuss that very much if, for example, the U.S. has a very strict regulation of crypto and of crypto exchanges and therefore prevents a lot of citizens to use crypto, to buy crypto, to trade crypto in a free way, much more than they are already doing now. This will, of course, heavily affect the crypto markets and, of course, could, could not only make it much more difficult for crypto to become a global thing, much more than it's now, but also very much put the prices down of crypto. So we'll keep an eye on that, of course. Meanwhile, Google Cloud CEO Thomas Kurian has identified retail healthcare and three other industries at target areas. And Richard Whitman, head of digital asset strategy for Google's cloud division, said that the division plans to hire a group of employees with blockchain expertise. This move, if successful, would help Google further diversify beyond its advertising business. It will also strengthen Google's position 
In the growing market for computing and storage services, Google Cloud already offers tool that developers can use to build blockchain networks. So what we see here is that Google still believes that blockchain is a global thing and therefore puts money into it. I think that's a very good sign if a company like Google, however centralized this may be and therefore against the basic ideas of blockchain, that such a company is still looking into blockchain technology and strengthens its business portfolio also in that field. The video game and cryptocurrency industries would have struck anyone as curious bilbos. While the former was focused on entertainment, the latter sought to create a form of digital money to rival feared. The subsequent evolution of blockchain-based gaming owes more to the DeFi debts and non-fungible tokens that attracted a wealth of interest and investment during the bull run beginning in 2020. Today, crypto games are generating billions of dollars from transactions involving unique digital goods, tokenizers, NFTs, a thriving economy that has compelled some pay players to quit their jobs. That had been a lot of discussion last week. And I still think it's a great thing because basically, I mean, NFTs and video games are a thing that are that seems very, very reasonable. Like back in the days, I think it was like, wow, I think 2000 and 2000, 2001, 2002, I used to play Ultima Online. Not sure if anyone still remembers that game. I really got old. But there was like a multi a multiplayer online role-playing game. And even in that game, back in the days before there were platforms for that, you could like receive digital goods when hunting monsters, like get special loot, special swords and all kind of stuff. And there was even a trade system online and people paid real money to get some of these swords. I mean, even like 20 years ago, that was already a thing. And basically these swords were unique. So basically it makes very much sense to sell them as NFTs on the blockchain. I really think that NFTs and video games have a future and that is a thing that could absolutely work in favor of a blockchain industry. However, one thing that worries me is that many companies might want to like, well, make money out of that even after a game came out. I mean, you all know the problem of microtransactions as it's called in video games. FIFA with the ultimate team system is such an example. Like you pay the, you, you buy the game for 70 bucks, 80 bucks, and then you still need to pay money to get certain players if you want to play online. And players are very much opposed to that already because it's, it feels like the companies are making a lot of money even after you pay the ga- uh, you pay for the game initially and of course nfts could endanger that however if nfts are used to like that players can make money out of the game by selling goods to other players that if that's a legal thing and if that's absolutely okay i mean nobody's forced to buy these goods and i think that's reasonable and doesn't really differ such a system from any other system of making money there is out there then last week, and at the beginning of that week, there has been a lot of dis- discussion about India. The Indian government will rule out a digital currency over the coming year, the finance minister said. India provisionally suggested banning crypto, but now plans to regulate and tax it. India, as a major digital trading uh, hub, like there's a lot of Bitcoin trading there, with an estimated 15 to 20 million crypto investors in the country could play a huge role in the world. And the 2002 Global Crypto Market Adoption Index from Chain Analysis showed Asia is leading the way in global crypto adoption and India is second only to Vietnam. So if India really puts out a digital currency, the digital rupee, that could be really an important thing for the blockchain community. However, we must be aware that that will be a state-controlled digital currency, which probably is against a lot of beliefs from people listening to this podcast, saying that digital currencies such as 
um, while the classic Bitcoin Ethereum should not be run by governments. However, I think whatever you say, whatever you think, whatever you want, it's not going to happen. The countries will put out digital currencies. Not sure if they will be really run on the blockchain or any other digital ledger technology, but they will come. And we've seen that already in, uh, with some countries doing the first tests on that. I mean, Sweden with the e-crown is one of the most renowned examples. But now it seems like other countries would follow. Probably first we will have countries that are not as developed in their banking systems like the Western countries. So meaning, for example, India. But soon others also in the rest of the world will follow and we will get the central bank digital currencies. I'm very sure of that. So in here is just moving ahead and we'll see who will be moving next. So once again, there had also been discussion about Bitcoin mining and the sustainability of the blockchain technology. Bitcoin mining accounts for 0.6% of the world's totally energy consumptions, and it burns more electricity annually than Norway. The process of mining Bitcoin gulps more than 91 terawatt hours of electricity annually, more than is used by Finland, a nation of about 5.5 million people. China is one of the countries that has banned cryptocurrency mining over the high energy consumptions of electricity involved in the process of cryptocurrency mining. Iran is banning cryptocurrency mining now as well because Iran really has an energy crisis and it must avoid blackouts. So we do have a problem with blockchain technology if you do it in this proof of work way of thing uh, that Bitcoin, that the old Blit blockchain of Bitcoin does. However, I know that there are many other blockchain solutions that are sustainable. So whenever I read blockchain is not sustainable, I want to make sure that everyone listens to this, who listens to this podcast, even the newest to blockchain technology, are aware that this only concerns certain older blockchains that use the proof of work method instead of, for example, proof-of-stake method. So basically, the sustainability problem of blockchain changes over time. The better and newer the blockchain, the less the sustainable question is really a thing. However, it remains a thing for Bitcoin. And I wonder when this will really turn even more into the focus of a public concerning that we are facing climate change problems. And there were a lot of political activities such as the Green Deal in Europe that aim at becoming, at getting the economy climate neutral. Meaning that in this case, Bitcoin and the old blockchain of Bitcoin will get a lot of pressure. I'm still 100% certain that that will happen. So basically, we'll have to look into that in the future again. So then there has been discussion of Russia. Russian Deputy Prime Minister Dmitry Shemyshenko, excuse me if I spelled that wrong, has reportedly signed a roadmap to regulate crypto operations in Russia. Russia's central bank published a consultation paper that proposed a blanket ban on crypto-related activity in the country. Future bans on regulations will determine the future of the industry in Russia. And 2022 may be a defining year for the crypto industry worldwide and, of course, especially in Russia. And those competing to either welcome it or ban, ban it. So you see there are some countries trying to ban crypto in a way that especially they want to run central banks' digital currencies or absolutely control economic operations from a governmental point of view. And of course, the decentralized blockchain solutions and the cryptocurrencies that are run privately like Ethereum or Bitcoin don't help there at all. However, I think that it's not likely that a lot of countries, also not Western countries, will actually follow on that example. 
Um, the more the question will remain more if Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies will hold their state once there are the central bank digital currencies, and if they will survive a media shitstorm if there's any scandal, especially concerning the Teva case. Um, the experts on cryptocurrency know what that means. If you're not an expert, just look that up because I think that the Tether problem is really a problem for the cryptocurrency uh, community. But basically, that's the thing for today. More coming up in the future, in the near future again. Keep an eye on blockchain and cryptocurrencies. And if you want, feel free to join the Blockchain Lawyers Network for free to keep up with all updates concerning blockchain, crypto, and NFT. It's www.blockchainlawyersnetwork.com. I repeat it, www.blockchainlawyersnetwork.com. Just be my guest there for free. I'm running it. I'm sharing crypto news and blockchain news nearly every day. And there's a lot of other community members that share blockchain news and connect with each other. Looking forward to get, see, hearing you there. My name is Dennis Hellman. I'm a lawyer with Field Future Germany. I'm looking forward for you to join again in the next episode of The Law of the Future. Have fun.